<laughs> yes. Oh, that will make sense as this video plays out. This is a nice little round. I've always wanted to try this on this map. This is basically a little bit of some Halo tower defense. If you've never played a tower defense game, uh, basically it's exactly what it sounds like. You have an area, a tower if you will, and you have to defend it against hordes and hordes of rushing bad guys. And on this map it plays perfectly because that building in the center makes the perfect tower. And uh, my team basically gets all up in there and we defend it against the hordes and hordes of rushing bad guys. That would be the red team. Because they're bad. Red is the universal color of badness. Actually no, I like red. Red is an awesome color. Uh, it looks great on sports cars and this guy owes me a cookie. Whoever's driving that Mantis owes me a cookie because I just saved his butt. Anyway, the team we're playing against isn't all that smart. If I was playing against a team that was doing this castle defense or tower defense strategy, uh, basically the only way you can really do it is to, if you mass, if you charge that tower in mass. Like in other words, everybody on your team charges at once, going in every possible entrance. Uh, otherwise, it's basically impossible to get inside there and do any work. So that's how I would solve it. I think a lot of people had their own. The problem with the enemy team is they can try to come in one at a time, and uh, once my teammates realized kind of what was going on up here, we were all up here, so there's like seven or eight people on the team. On any given point, there's about at least maximum of eight people. I think in this game it was pretty much full the entire time, so, you know, seven of the eight players on this team were up in this tower. So the only way the enemy team could get in here with any real potential is to nade the crap out of it and then just bum rush it with everybody they had. And they didn't do that. The red team didn't do that. They tried to come in one at a time and they just, it just didn't work out well for them. So hopefully you guys will enjoy it. It's an interesting strategy. If you ever have a, a full team of people, well, I should say that this is not a full team of people. I'm playing the solo. Uh, the other people on this team just kind of happened to, we all happened to, uh, pardon me, distract my keyboard. The other people on this team all just kind of happened to come across the same uh, strategy at the same time. We're like, hey, let's try this. So it was not a, coordina a coordinated event or anything, but if you are at a, at a party and you're playing on this map, which I forget what this map is called, it's just a fun map to play on. But if you are playing on a party, uh, this is a perfect strategy to do on this map because it will make people angry. Especially if you have one or two guys running the, the machine guns like I do, like I am right now, and will be pretty much for the rest of this video. It makes it even more challenging to get people out of here. Another thing I never understood about Halo, the Master Chief can flip vehicles. He can flip tanks, he can flip warthogs, but when he picks up this minigun, he walks really slowly. I have never been able to figure that out as to why. <laughs> why that is the case. It's one of those little quirks about Halo that you just gotta deal with, I guess. Now, I saw the COD reveal trailer. I was watching a little bit of that of the COD Ghosts event reveal stuff, and interesting would be an interesting way to put it. That, that's going to be the way I'm going to describe that game. It looks like it could be fun. Now, am I going to get it on the launch day? No. Uh, I still have not bought any Call of Duty game since the original Black Ops, and I don't plan on getting COD Ghosts initially. And the reason for that is... You don't know how I don't know how it's going to play online. These at these events they always use land connections, and it's not a very good uh, representation of what it's actually going to be like when you're playing on Xbox Live. Uh, two, I'm not going to have an Xbox One at launch, so I won't be able to get. Oh, I almost had no scope there. I won't have an Xbox One at launch, so it'll be a little difficult for me to uh, to get the Xbox One version. I don't think the Xbox One version. Eh, I really don't think the Xbox One version and the, the current generation versions are going to be too different, but if I'm going to get it, I'd rather get it either for the next-gen consoles or for the PC. And that's another point. I don't know how it's going to play on the PC. Historically, Call of Duty has been pretty pretty bad on the PCs since COD 4. They haven't really had the support that the console versions have gotten, which is a shame because at the time, Call of Duty on the PC was incredible, but they've kind of given that up for the consoles, so who knows what will happen at that point. The last thing that I'm kind of curious is the community. There's like, what, 52 perks in the game? 
And the Call of Duty community is notorious for being very immature, very douche sackery, and like if something is, is broken, you can guarantee that everybody and their mom will be using it. So I'm just kind of curious to see how that all plays out. If it looks like it's actually fun and maybe working properly, I may get it. I've always been a fan of Call of Duty, I just don't like the fact that they've gone all Michael Bay lately. I don't like the over-the-topness for the sake of being over-the-top. Like, if they're going to do uh, the Michael Bay stuff in, Bla in Cod Ghosts, I pro probably will not enjoy it too much. I like my game simple, that's why I like Halo. Simple game. Battlefield 4, it's a complex game, but it's still fairly simple because it's simple. You know, there's not a whole lot of stuff like you don't have to worry about perks and you know, I'm sure there'll be a whole lot of attachments and stuff. Maybe Battlefield 4 will be getting a little more complex than past Battlefield titles. I don't know. As long as it doesn't go Michael Bay on us, I think I won't have a problem with it. And uh, I said, if you don't know what I mean by Michael Bay, pretty much it's over the top for the sake of being over the top. It's crazy for the sake of being crazy. All the explosions and the action really don't add to the game at all. It just makes it over the top. You know, like I said, explosions and explosions for the sake of explosions. Everybody loves explosions, but they have to have a purpose. And the destructible environments that they showed off in COD Ghosts are pretty laughable. Uh, I think Bad Company, the original Bad Company, had more destructible environments than Black Ops with uh, COD Ghosts. Just my opinion from the observations I've seen so far. And I don't know if the setup's actually working. The minigun with the damage boost. I just wanted to try it. I thought it would be interesting to try it out. If you guys have ever tried that out, does it actually you know, kill faster? Or is it just a placebo effect? I don't know. Who knows? Not me. I don't play Halo enough to know these things. I don't think anybody plays Halo enough to know these things. Halo is an unfortunate game. It's, in it's incredibly fun. It really is. But it's barely in the top 10 on Xbox Live, and almost nobody does it regularly on YouTube that I can tell. At least the serious commentary stuff. You have a lot of people that do trolling and stuff. Because Halo is the first of those troll type videos. <laughs> that guy going down the elevator and coming back up. I don't know why I thought that was funny, but it was. Uh, more assists. Assists for days. I get assists so much in this game. I think I get. Oh, I, go, I know I finished 17 and 2, but I think I have like 12 assists at the end. I'm not sure. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this gameplay. Interesting style to play this map if you've never tried it before. I highly suggest trying it. Uh, good old power defense. Until next time, happy fragging.